on the live stream. Thank you very much for joining us. So I am Wayne Zabayan, I'm Head of Communication at the African Union Commission. And I am joined to my right by His Excellency Ambassador Albert Nochanga, and he is the Commissioner at the AU Commission responsible for economic development, trade, tourism, industry, and minerals. Now, Ambassador is going to be speaking to um, a, a range of issues. Let me just uh, get those issues for you. Just give me a minute so that you know what to expect from, um, from the Commissioner. So the Commissioner will be speaking, no, actually, this is from the last one. Uh, anyway, assessment co readiness Commissioner. Assessment towards the African uh, Customs Union. All right. Thank you very much, Commissioner, for helping us out there. I had the details of a previous um, press conference. So without much ado, let me hand over to Commissioner Ambassador Mochanga for his briefing, after which we will then come to the Q&A section. Excellency, it's over to you. Thank you very much, uh, the director, for this event. And uh, I greet each and every one of you, the members of the media. Uh, my briefing is on uh, an activity we're undertaking at the African Union in our department uh, entitled a Redness Assessment Towards an African Customs Union. Now, before I go into the details of uh, that briefing, those of you who attended the opening ceremony of the ongoing Executive Council of uh, the African Union, I'm sure you recall a very, very strong statement, very positive and passionate statement made by our gracious host, the Foreign Minister of this great country. In that statement, he endlessly called upon Africa to facilitate the free movement of people across the continent. And when he made that statement, he got a very, very loud applause, meaning that uh, the message was well received and that the message was positive. Now, free movement of people normally takes place uh, in the setting of a common market where people of a number of countries have decided uh, to facilitate free movement of people. All they need to do is give an ID. You can live in any of the countries. You can work in any of the countries. You can go and get employed in one of the countries, and there is mutual recognition of academic and professional qualifications, so complete harmonization. That's the ideal we are looking towards to. Now, as we go through that, I'm sure all of you have much often read the original text of the Constitutive Act of the African Union. And if you have, the first page is going to give you the authors of that document at the level of institutions. And the joint authors are the Organization of African Union and the African Economic Community. Those two institutions are the co-authors. And when you go through the Constitutive Act of the African Union, one of the objectives is on economic integration, building upon the commitment made in 1991 when our leaders signed and ratified in 1994 the agreement establishing the African Economic Community. 
So they gave operational content to that. And as you read through the Constitutive Act of the African Union, you come to Article 19. And there you're going to find a number of institutions to facilitate Pan-African integration. And those are the African Central Bank, the African Monetary Fund, and the African Investment Bank. At a later stage, the heads of state and government decided to add a fourth institution, which is the Pan-African Stock Exchange. Now, when we go back again to the Abuja Treaty of 1991, which was ratified 1994, We developed a six-phase approach to facilitating realization of the idea of an African economic community. And in those stages, one of the commitments was that uh, by 2023, which is this year, we should have an African customs union. Based on this, our leaders in 2019 made a decision that uh, we should undertake a readiness assessment towards an African customs union. And that's the work which is going on right now. And we hope to conclude it early next year. And the results are going to be shared with you. Now, as we undertake that readiness assessment, we do so against a background of experience in the development of customs union. The biggest customs, or the oldest, not the biggest, the oldest customs union in the world right now is the Southern African Customs Union, encompassing South Africa, Namibia, Botswana, Eswatini, and Lesotho. Then we also have the East African Community, which is a customs union, and the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS. So when you're undertaking the readiness assessment, we are going to gain from the lessons of experience of these regional organizations. And the African Union recognizes eight regional economic communities. And some of them, like Southern African Development Community, SADC, the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA, and the Economic Community of West, uh, Central African States, ECAS are in the stages of establishing the free trade area. And of course, we also do so against the background of the existence of the African continental free trade area. By size of countries, it is the largest free trade area in the world. And as this free trade area exists, there are also components which lead us towards a customs union or common market. And I already mentioned one of them, the protocol on free movement of people. Then we have the single African air transport market, which was adopted by the heads of state and government in 2018. And 2018 is also the year when the heads of state and government decided to open for signature the protocol on free movement of people. Actually, the full name is Protocol of the African Economic Community related to free movement of people 
right of residence and right of establishment. But for simplicity, we call it the protocol on free movement of people. So far, the two countries have signed that protocol and four countries have ratified it. For it to enter into force, it needs a minimum of 15 ratifications. For us to grow intra-African trade, we need that protocol so that uh, people should be able to move free across the continent. So it's a building block. Then you also have the protocol on investment adopted by the heads of state and government this year, which is going to harmonize policies on investment across the African continent of Federal, among other functions in addition to attracting investments. And this year again, we had approved by the heads of state and government the protocol on competition policy and the protocol on intellectual property rights. Then at the macroeconomy in 2021, our leaders adopted the macroeconomic convergence criteria with a number of issues that are going to promote macro economic convergence among the countries of Africa and in the process promote policy harmonization at the macro economy. These relate to issues of inflation, the issues of budget deficits, the issues of government credit, the issues of external reserves, the issues of tax revenue, among others, the exchange rate. So on the basis of this, we are saying the foundations for an African common market slash customs in the exist. Why do we need it? Our economies are very small and fragmented. There are several national currencies across the continent which go to promote intra-African trade. So we are moving towards defragmentation. And the African continent of Nigeria is not enough. Why? Because we are creating a large market. Very attractive like large market. But that market as it is, exists right now, each country has a national external tariff. What we want is a common external tariff. As long as this arrangement exists, there will always be the danger that third parties can take advantage of this large market by bring in goods we should trade duty free across the market in technical terms we call that transshipment or trade deflection and the negative impact would be to undermine the process of industrialization across africa because they'll be dumping industrial goods and benefiting from them and they did add a value to that. So that is a key problem for the reason why we need to accelerate movement towards an African customs union. In addition to the fact that we have got building blocks which are applying there. And when we have now come up with a customs union, we are going to have a base for resilience. When you look at the world as it is right now, the phenomena that is uh, before us is the fragmentation of international trade. And the way to survive in this fragmentation, it was a very strong domestic market, very resilient. 
and the African Customs Union is going to be that institution. Furthermore, you heard our leaders always saying Africa must speak with one voice. So if we have a common external tariff, we enhance the institutional base for speaking with one voice and acting in, in his own. And in a way, that is also going to make it possible for us to negotiate in a very coordinated manner in places like the World Trade Organization. And that would give us a push to have the African Union have observer status in the World Trade Organization. So this is where we are. And like I indicated, we plan to roll out a completed study early next year and it will go through the policy organs, starting with a specialized technical committee of ministers of finance, monetary affairs, economic planning and integration, and ultimately the assembly. And as it rolls out, we're also going to get inputs from stakeholders, including the media. So I'll stop here and await your questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. All right, colleagues, it's over to you for your questions. Any new questions, points of clarification that you might have? They're very happy. We don't have any questions. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any questions. All right, okay. Um, please note that uh, you can, um, if, if you need to have interviews with His Excellency, you can contact my colleague Mola Let, who's over there, and uh, Mola will be able to connect you so that you can have uh, any interviews that you may wish, not with just uh, His Excellency the Commissioner, but with the leadership of the African Union in general. All right, I still see no hands going up. Commissioner, I think your briefing was very clear and to the point, so thank you very much. I want to thank His Excellency for sparing this time to come to talk to us and uh, to everyone who has joined us, both those in the room and outside the room. Our next briefing, Mola, will be at, is it 12 or 12.15? 12. 12. So our next briefing is coming up in 15 minutes time and it is another commissioner who will join us. Thank you, Excellency. Thank you. All right. All the best. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay.